For nearly a century, Bethlehem Steel has manufactured the bones that lie beneath the skin of the modern world. Over the years, their plants have churned out more than 850 million tons of steel. Steel frames support the most famous buildings and bridges on Earth. The Golden Gate, the Chrysler Building, and Rockefeller Center were all born in this inferno. Before steel, most office buildings were made out of brick or masonry. Their walls carried their weight. Brick buildings could only climb a few floors before they collapsed under their own bulk. And then in the late 1800s, engineers began building around frames of steel. By spreading the weight across a skeleton of high-strength steel beams, buildings were able to reach unprecedented heights. But it took the invention of the elevator to make skyscrapers a reality. They're found inside the central core of every tall building. Virtually everyone has had the experience of riding in an elevator. We take them for granted, but without elevators, there would be no skyscrapers. Landmarks such as the Chrysler Building were assembled before power tools and safety regulations transformed construction. As late as the 1950s, skyscrapers were virtually handmade, riveted together by men with no fear. In the old days, a skyscraper crew would number up to 4,000 laborers and tradesmen. Much of their work involved raw physical labor, pushing and pulling pieces of the framework together for final riveting. Working high in the air, four-man crews connected gargantuan I-beams with red-hot steel rivets. The rivets were cast in a forge, tossed up to the crews, then jammed into the beams. The ends of the rivets were smashed into caps that bonded the framework. When the rivets cooled, the steel contracted, tightening the bond. Steel rivets hold together most of the great buildings and bridges of the Western world but they're rarely used today. Stronger materials have made them unnecessary. The ultimate product of the golden age of skyscrapers was finished in 1931. Construction lasted little more than a year, but it took seven million man hours to build. Its frame was made out of 60,000 tons of steel. It was fitted with 6,500 windows and 73 elevators. For more than 40 years, it was the world's tallest building. It is, of course, the Empire State Building. For many, the image of the Empire State Building is what springs to mind when they hear the word skyscraper.
Though it has become an icon, the Empire State is still a busy office building housing everything from lingerie designers to software engineers. The Empire State consumes 40 million kilowatt hours of electricity every year. Small towns use less power. The building is strung with 473 miles of electrical wire, enough to stretch from New York to Detroit. It takes seven electricians to keep all the circuits functioning. They are just a few of the Empire State Building's 250 employees. After the tenants go home, the building's 183 custodians go to work. A building this size generates an enormous amount of waste. More than a hundred tons of trash are hauled out of here every month. Regular maintenance has kept the Empire State Building in pristine condition. Experts say that as long as it is maintained, it could stand for centuries. Other buildings on the Manhattan skyline won't be so lucky. But other buildings can't claim to be enduring symbols of a place and a people. The Skyscraper's Skyscraper, New York's Empire State Building. And on its top, King Kong, a big hairy gorilla with a crush on a girl who was, frankly, far too small for him. And let's not forget, the wrong species. The bit that Kong swings from when he's boxing biplanes is the Empire State's famous mast. The antenna still does what it's always done, which is transmit television and radio shows for New York's broadcasters. But at a dizzying 443 meters above the ground, it's vulnerable to New York's extreme temperatures and the harsh winds coming in from the Atlantic. So when the mast develops a fault and needs fixing, how do they do it? Meet 61-year-old Tom Silliman. You might think he looks like an everyday kind of guy, but when there's a spot of trouble, Tom dives into a phone box, changes into his superhero outfit, and becomes a real-life Spider-Man. Because for the past 30 years, Tom has been climbing up the side of the tallest buildings in America to fix the bits on the top. For the last 18 months, Tom's been surveying the mast on top of New York's Empire State Building. The mast was built back in the 1950s, but since then it's been repeatedly altered and modified with new transmitters and antenna, and there are now no complete diagrams. So to complete his new survey, Tom must make one last climb, but it's a climb that will take him to the very top of the Empire State, 443 meters in the air. We need some information here and here and here. In order to complete the climb, Tom and his team will have to work at night when the radio mast can be shut down to protect them from harmful UHF transmissions. Before we go up, we need to make sure that this antenna is totally cold. It would be like being in a microwave oven. So the problem is it would be cooking you from the inside out so that by the time you felt the heat, you'd already be cooked pretty bad. Working in freezing temperatures, the team will have just four hours to reach the summit of the Empire State to complete the final part of their survey and clear the area before the mast is switched back on. I know there's problems in there. The job will be a perilous race against the clock. We got our safety gear, we got our passes, we're good to go. 